Welcome to our final edition of It's Tea Time for the fall semester. I'm Jonathan Sellers. I'm joined by John Hartwell, the director of athletics for Troy University. And John, uh, we had a pretty good Thanksgiving for Troy sports uh, as the Black Friday shoppers got to come back to Troy to see a pretty good game, football game that day. Yeah, we did. And uh, it's, uh, it's always great to close out the regular season with the win. Uh, certainly the win Friday over Texas State um, allowed us to get bowl eligible, six and six. Uh, Four and three in the league, and uh, and finish up a four and one uh, home record for the year. So uh, you know, certainly a special day on Senior Day. I think we had 21 seniors uh, who were honored, and uh, certainly great to send those guys out in the regular season as winners. And uh, kind of in the in the wait and see mode right now. Although we've uh, we've been busy lobbying behind the scenes uh, with some bowls, but uh, you know, as things kind of all shake out. Right now, I think there are 79 bowl eligible teams for 70 slots. That may change slightly depending on Saturday's conference right. championship games, uh, who gets in the BCS uh, uh, matchups. But, uh, you know, uh, we, we still have an opportunity, uh, probably most likely uh, the Little Caesars Bowl in Detroit, which is played on uh, December 26 in Ford Field. But, uh, you know, we'll, uh, if we get that opportunity, certainly we'll be uh, appreciative of it and, uh, and look forward to it. Uh, but if not, a whole lot of things to build on uh, going forward as a 6-16. Six and six team. When you talk about uh, lobbying for the, the bowls, can you give us a little insight into what goes into that? What are, what are you doing right now? Sure. Uh, a lot of uh, communication, emails. You know, you, you kind of walk a fine line because you don't want to over- uh, burden folks with information because they'll turn it off uh, on you. But um, certainly I've had some correspondence, uh, uh, not only working through our league, but also directly with the executive director, uh, Ken Hoffman of the, uh, of the Little Caesars Bowl. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll wait and see what happens. Their committee is not meeting until Friday uh, to go through some, some options. And, you know, if you look at the projections out there, uh, some folks say Pitt, some people say Notre Dame. Uh, so we'll, we'll just see. And, uh, you know, we, we certainly uh, will keep fighting for it uh, right till the end, and, and hopefully uh, that, that will pay off. Well, is there anything fans can do to help right now? I know y'all have kind of pushed uh, reserving <coughs> seat, uh, reserving tickets. Sure, that's tickets. a great point. Uh, you can go on our website, www.troytrojans.com and reserve uh, tickets for the bowl. You, you're not obligated to pay up front, but uh, if you can go on there, and I think we're uh, just over 1,000 uh, tickets reserved. I think they're about right at 500 folks who have ordered, but uh, ordering a total of 1,000, uh, just over 1,000 tickets. And certainly we pass that information along to the bowl folks, and uh, the, the more tickets we have out there committed, obviously the more attractive we are. But uh, uh, again, we... Uh, you know, uh, yeah, there were some more games we could have won along the way, but uh, we ended up winning six. We got to bowl eligibility, and now we're uh, kind of working behind the scenes to see if we can't find a home. And kind of keeping the fingers crossed and maybe hoping things will work out. <clears throat> Absolutely. Well, let's talk a little bit about basketball. Women's basketball has a big week ahead, and uh, we'll hear a little bit later on more about it, but uh, they're playing Florida here in Troy on Wednesday. Absolutely, and uh, you know, any time we can get SEC opponents, and certainly that that's a desire of ours uh, in any sport to get them uh, on campus so we can play home games against them. Uh, you know, uh, that that's a big deal for us, and certainly uh, tomorrow is dead day. Today is the last day of uh, regular classes before exams start on Thursday. So hopefully. Uh, our students can uh, get up early and study for a while and, uh, and then uh, come to the game for a little study break and uh, certainly our folks in the community and uh, in surrounding areas to come out and see you know, a very exciting brand of basketball. And I know uh, I went to practice for a couple of minutes yesterday and I know uh, Coach Rigby and her staff are working very hard. Really kind of a, a bad taste in their mouth from Saturday against right. Jacksonville University, uh, a game really they felt they should have won and, and literally – uh, just very cold shooting uh, is, is what uh, doomed them in the end in that game. But, but again, uh, what a way and an opportunity to come out and make a statement uh, against uh, you know a Florida team that that's a very good SEC basketball team, but they're not you know they're not in the top five of the country. It's right. not you know UConn or Stanford, 
uh, coming in here. So, uh, you know, it'll be an exciting evening. Oh, and we all know how electric Trojan Arena could be if you were there for the Mississippi State game last year. You got to see that atmosphere and just bringing that to the women's side and letting them experience that would just be a great uh, tribute to them. Absolutely, to get that crowd going. And, you know, uh, on a smaller scale, even in the, the volleyball uh, matches during the right. Sun Belt Conference tournament a couple of weeks ago, uh, when when we were able to knock off number one seed Western Kentucky right. and a, a large crowd in there and people really into the game and that's certainly the atmosphere that we want to have tomorrow night for the women against Florida but certainly uh, every time every we, game, we right. play in there both men's and women's basketball. Well you said uh, Florida's not at the top of the country but one of the teams that is is Tennessee and the women go uh, visit them uh, later uh, in the schedule in December. Yeah absolutely uh, you know uh, a after this weekend's uh, games our men's and women's basketball teams will, will take a small break uh, for exams and, and rightfully so certainly the the emphasis needs to be on academics during that time but then between the end of exams and uh, and the Christmas break uh, you know the women go to to Tennessee and, and play in Knoxville which will be quite a challenge but again uh, you know playing against high levels of competition help to get us ready for conference play coming right after the holidays. And just talk a little bit about the men's schedule. They, uh, they have a, a big in-state rival game coming up this Saturday, and they just came off a pretty good win over uh, Alcorn State last night. Sure, Alcorn State last night, a double overtime game. Very rare because it was a game where in the two overtimes, uh, we did not make a single field goal. Right. All of the points were from the free throw line. But, uh, you know, hard-fought battle. Uh, Alcorn's got... I think three transfers from uh, SEC schools that have ended up there, including a couple that uh, Coach Cunningham and uh, Grant and Bagley were very familiar with because it was a guy that played for three years at uh, or two years at Mississippi State. So uh, you know, a, a good win last night, and again, certain certainly something to build off of. The men play uh, Alabama State Saturday, then they'll take basically a week-long break. Uh, before he heading to Manhattan, Kansas to play Kansas State uh, a week from Sunday and then going on from there to Utah State to compete in a three-day tournament there. So, uh, uh, again, a, a lot of uh, basketball on the horizon between now and Christmas against very high levels of competition. Right, Kansas State is normally a team that you'll see playing in uh, the NCAA tournament as well as Utah State, and that's not just facing Utah State, it's uh, two other teams in that tournament. Right, absolutely, and again, getting both our men's and women's teams ready for conference play. All right, we'll, uh, we'll uh, try to stay tuned to the bowl situation and, and figure out what's going on there, and uh, we'll tell people to stay tuned to TroyTrojans.com to find out the latest information. Absolutely, and, and all of that... Uh, should be clarified by, say, noon Sunday at okay. the latest. Certainly the championship games this weekend, a few regular season games remain, uh, but all of, all of the bowl uh, drama and question marks uh, will be answered by around midday on uh, Sunday. All right, and we'll see you again in 2014. Great, thanks, and uh, again, uh, happy, new, happy holidays to uh, all of uh, Trojan Nation out there, and uh, please get out and support our teams. Uh, men's and women's basketball while you can uh, between now and the holidays. Certainly if we have a bowl opportunity, we would encourage as many folks uh, to, to go bowling with us as possible and uh, look forward to seeing everybody in the new year. All right, sounds good. All right, and stay tuned for uh, some basketball information coming up on It's Tea Time. Welcome back to It's Tea Time. And now we're going to talk some men's basketball with the head coach of the men. That's Coach Phil Cunningham and Coach, thanks for being here today. And I'm after I know a, a, a long night for you last night with a double overtime win over Alcorn State. Jonathan, that was a long night. It was a, a very challenging night. Uh, we, we took a lead and thought we had some some uh, some room to, to go ahead and blow the game out. And they made a run and got back in the game. And and then we had to we had to make a couple of plays at the end of regulation and a couple of plays in the first overtime to force that second overtime. So our guys hung in there and and, and fought and fought to the end and. And pulled out a win. How many uh, double overtime wins do you see where you don't score a field goal in overtime? All your points came off of free throws. Yeah, it was it was an interesting game because we, we got them in foul trouble. And one of the keys to actually winning the game was we fouled out a couple of their better offensive players. And but but we had an advantage inside. And one of our uh, points of emphasis was was we were going to attack them in the paint. And what that led to was foul trouble on their part. And eventually it fouled out uh, probably their best player. Uh, who had made a couple of huge threes late in the game. Uh, but our guys did a good job of, of, of going inside and also offensive rebounding. You draw fouls, too, when you, when you rebound the ball on the offensive end. 
And Alcorn State wasn't a bad team. They had a, a couple of guys from SEC schools that had transferred there, so they were a pretty decent team. They were good. They were, they were a talented team. They were athletic. They were well coached. I knew a lot of those guys from my background. One of the kids I had recruited for four years at Mississippi State, and he played there three years before he transferred to Alcorn. So I knew how talented they were, and, and, and they were – they thought it was a game they could come in and win. You know, they played some bigger teams and, and they were ready to play. And, and, uh, and our guys, you know, did a good job again, just, just getting a win. We needed a win from a confidence standpoint. Right. Well, now you get another chance for uh, W on Saturday, one o'clock against Alabama State here at home and uh, an in-state rival like Alabama State, that's gotta be a, a big matchup. Right, I mean, they're coming in hungry. Uh, they've been off for a while. And, and now we start to deal with finals this week and we're in finals Thursday and Friday, so it's a, it's a tough, a, a tough situation there when, when you, you have to be locked in academically because these guys, you know, end of the day, they're student athletes right. and they've got to get locked in academically. But at the same time, we have to prepare and be ready to play a big game on Saturday. Well, how do you find that happy medium between the, the exams and the basketball? Well, we, we, well, we talked to the team about it just takes, it takes discipline. And, and when, for example, they had, and this is all students at Troy, but for these guys, it may be a little different just because they have maybe a, a more, uh, obviously a more demanding physical schedule, but we told them you, you have to learn to shift. I mean, you, you're, you're totally locked in mentally and physically on basketball, and you just came out of a double overtime game, but you have to shift. You have to immediately shift and get your focus back academically. And what we'll do from a basketball standpoint is we'll cut back on, the, on, our, on our amount of practice. We still have to practice um, uh, every day. We're, they're off today, but we still have to practice three days before the game and prepare for Alabama State. We just won't take as much time to practice as normally because we have a responsibility to them right. to do well academically. Well, and then you've got a, a little bit of a break before you kind of do a pretty tough uh, Christmas schedule where you're going to be traveling to Kansas State and then Utah State for a tournament. That, that's not an easy uh, stretch of games. No, that's, that's a stretch of games that when we made the schedule, we knew it would be tough, and we were hoping that, that by this time, you know, we would be playing well, and, and, and we're probably not quite there yet. We're struggling offensively. But we better be ready when we get on the bus to go that trip because Kansas State on the road is going to be a very difficult challenge. And then out there at the Utah State, it's a, tur it's a, it's a tournament where you already know who you play. Right. Each day we play uh, Cal Santa Barbara first, then we play Western Illinois, and finish with Utah State, who's an excellent team at home. So we've got a work cut out for us, too, there. And, and you know, we, Jeff Millay, he didn't start last night and, and only played a little bit because he's been suffering through some leg injuries. And, man, we need everybody we've got out there because we play four games. We play on a Sunday against Kansas State, and then we play Thursday, Friday, Saturday in Utah. So depth is going to become an issue, and we're already down. DJ Jethro hadn't played all year. And, uh, and, and we've got two guys sitting out in, in a situation where we knew they were going to be sitting out. So uh, depth is going to be a factor on that trip. All right, Coach. Well, uh, good luck on the upcoming trip, and uh, hopefully your team will have a happy holidays with some uh, big wins out there. Thank you, John. Same to you guys. All right. Stay tuned for more coming up on It's Tea Time. Now on It's Tea Time, we're going to talk a little bit about the women's basketball team, and we're joined by – an assistant coach with the women, Courtney Simmons. And Courtney, thank you for joining us here today. Thanks for having me. And y'all got a big weekend ahead. Uh, mm -hmm. Starts off with the, the Wednesday night game against the University of Florida, and they're coming here to Trojan Arena, and that's just a very exciting game for y'all. Yeah, we're, we're looking forward to having the Gators to come in to, um, to Troy and Trojan Arena, and we really just want to focus on packing in the house and just giving our girls that extra motivation to just go out there and dominate the game. And what do you know about this Florida team? Um, they're they're only playing with eight kids right now. Um, some have been suspended, a couple injuries or whatever. And but they're playing real good basketball right now. They're a real scrappy team. Um, they're five and three coming off of a victory in the a tournament in the Bahamas. So you know they're playing well. We're trying to go ahead and knock them off that high horse they're sitting on right now. Well, how do you think that uh, their lack of depth kind of plays into y'all's system a little bit? Y'all try to play so fast mm -hmm. and try to switch in so many people. They have just eight. Do you think that can wear them down? Well, we're hoping to wear them down. Uh, with them only having three uh, legit post players, we're looking to just keep our kids fresh and run them in and out of there as much as we can and just basically have it an up-tempo game to where it plays into our favor. And this uh, Florida game really starts a stretch of a kind of a tough December for y'all. Y'all uh, go up to Tennessee to play. You'll mm -hmm. play University of Alabama and just several m other games in December. Just talk about this stretch of games. Yeah, it's – well, we're not going to say it's tough for us. It'll be tough for them because we, we're planning <laughs> on bringing our A game. Uh, we go out to Knoxville and play Tennessee, and uh, obviously they'll have a great crowd out there. That's a great atmosphere, great uh, experience for our kids. And then going down to Alabama, in-state rival. Uh, we're looking forward to, you know, to the, the upcoming games. But, you know, we're just motivated on getting our team better and moving into conference play. So I think those games are definitely get us battle-tested. 
I mean, just talk a little bit about uh, Johanna, Joanna Harden for us. She uh, just set a Sun Belt record with 52 points mm -hmm. in a game, just had a great game uh, the other night against Alabama Huntsville, and just is uh, fourth in the country in scoring right now. Just talk about her season She's so only far. four. <laughs> I, I, I thought she would have been first by now, but I mean, how many more points does she have to score? But I mean, what what can you say about a kid like Joanna Hart? She's a great kid on and off the floor. When you have a kid that's your leading scorer or your best player on the team that works just as hard or even harder than everybody else, I mean, there's that's, that's not much more we can ask for out of her. She comes in every day and gets extra shots up. She came in at 8 o'clock this morning. I was in the gym with her. Uh, shot shot 200 shots you know mm -hmm. she's shooting 70 percent from the from the field off the gun uh thanks to our ad's for getting us those guns we really appreciate it they are helping our girls um but i mean there's there's so much i can say about a kid like joanna hart she's a professional basketball player and if the people in the WNBA don't give her a look then i think they're crazy <laughs> all right well uh one thing you said you want to get a lot of people out there for the game mm -hmm. wednesday night well give us the the time and and the place we know it's church tomorrow's arena, chosen arena let me look which which camera am i going to right here, right here. chosen <laughs> arena tomorrow night wednesday december 4th be there bring your family bring your friends bring your co-workers the next door neighbors the mailman <laughs> Everybody you know, if you go to McDonald's before the game, tell them to come too. So we just want to pack the house, everybody, tomorrow at 7 o'clock. So you hear that. We want a large, raucous crowd in Trojan Arena. Oh, yeah. We're going to have the place packed out. And uh, <laughs> Thank you for joining us, and we'll hopefully we'll, we'll be talking about a W next week. I hope so. All right, and stay tuned to hear a little bit about volleyball and how they wrapped up their season on It's Tea Time. Welcome back to our final look at Choice Sports in the fall semester. We're going to take a look at the volleyball team who had a – a pretty exciting end to their season in the Sun Belt Championships. Despite losing the finale, they had a uh, one of the biggest upsets probably in school history on that opening match. And Coach Sonny Kirkpatrick, uh, we'll go ahead and get to that one. The game against Western Kentucky, I know it was it was uh, much talked about in the upset over Western Kentucky, and it, very exciting for you, I'm sure. It was amazing. Uh, we had a game plan going into it. We had worked, we had played them four days before. Uh, so we had a, a game plan that we thought would work. Uh, and, and the big thing was the team bought in, and, and they they were kind of embarrassed by the way we had played the, the previous weekend. And, uh, you know, we, we did what we had to do. We, we put a complete match together uh, as well as the next night and uh, could not have been more proud of them. Uh, our fans were amazing. Uh, Trojan Arena showed its splendor. Uh, our, our staff that, that ran the tournament along with the Sun Belt staff just did a remarkable job and uh, it, it just made it all the much better that we happened to, to defeat the number one seed and one of the top teams in the country. Well, and not just defeat them, but, but you, you swept them. I mean, in three sets, uh, I mean, that team doesn't normally get beaten. They don't normally lose a set in, in, in many of their matches, but you swept them. I mean, pretty much a dominating performance. I wouldn't say dominating. <laughs> uh, we, we, made I'll plays, say that. we made plays when we had to. Uh, the, there was a, a note that that was the first time they had gotten swept from since the NCAA tournament last year by Stanford. Right. Uh, Stanford was ranked number four in the country. So for us to do that, uh, it, just, it, was a, it was a wonderful feat. Uh, it was a total team effort. Uh, the the team sacrificed for themselves and for the team and uh, really couldn't have played played much cleaner volleyball than we did. It was exciting. Uh, it was an intense atmosphere. Uh, the fans again were just fabulous and uh, probably one of the the finest uh, post game celebrations okay. ever. Uh, thank thank everyone that that came this weekend and supported Sunbelt volleyball and the Trojans and. Uh, made me really, really proud to to coach for this team in this university. Well, and you got to see a court storming. It's probably the first court <laughs> storming of Trojan Arena. I mean, just a very exciting time. And I know we've always talked about the crowd, and you've always talked about how important it is for them to be out there. But I mean, how much did the the team feed off the crowd that night? It was it was tremendous. Um, could we have won without them? Yes, but it would have been that much more difficult. Right. Uh, we fed off their energy. Uh, Especially when it came down to match point, uh, the, the the some of the shots that we saw in the in the arena were amazing. Right. Uh, with the stands jumping up and down and the cameras moving, and uh, if you weren't there, you really missed out. It was it was a spectacular night. Well, and then the next day, uh, played against UT Arlington in the semifinals. The crowd came back out again. Uh, you played them twice before early in this year. Lost or. Beat them once in five sets, lost to them once in five sets, and this time went to five sets again. But unfortunately, you were 
on the losing side of this one? We knew going in it was going to be a really difficult match, uh, and it was going to be a long match. And I was worried about a couple things. One, the the crowd that we had had the night before, with it being the beginning of Thanksgiving break, we weren't expecting a lot of people there. And and again, the crowd was phenomenal. Uh, could not. It was it was right around par with the night before. The second thing I was worried about was just our intensity and our emotion coming back from such a right. a match the night you know less than 24 hours later. Uh, but we, we really came out and we were focused. Uh, we went down 2-1, uh, won the fourth game, not easily, but handily. And then, uh, you know, we went back to, to game five and, and our Achilles heel all year had been the, the fifth game. We'd lost eight to 10 matches in, in game five. Uh, we played really well. Arlington played really well. It was a lot of fun. It, it, it stinks being on the, the losing side of that one. Right. It would have been nice to, to have a shot to go to the finals. But at the end of the day, you know, we always tell our team, if you go out and you give everything you have, win or lose, we can hold our heads high and, and move forward. And they, they certainly did that. Uh, could not have been more proud of their effort and their determination. And, you know, 22-20 in the fifth game when you only go to 15 is, uh, is, is a lot of fun. Well, and you've got to kind of be pleased with the way your, your team ended the year. Uh, they had a kind of a, a string there where they just couldn't seem to get on the winning side, but then you finished, uh, I believe, winning four of your last six matches, and, and you kind of had to be pleased with that. Very much so. Uh, we really we put our backs against the wall. No one else did that for us. Uh, we had to battle through some adversity to get to the, the tournament here. And, uh, you know, our, our team showed its character and really dedicated themselves into – to being better, and that was that was the fun part. They could have easily quit uh, midway through the season, but every day they came to practice, they worked hard. Uh, there was never any, you know, uh, we're, we're just gonna pack it in and, and go home and not have to worry about the tournament. And uh, that was just, that showed at the end of the year. It was it was a lot of fun at the, at the end. It was frustrating in the middle, uh, but uh, you know, we, we ended on a really good note. Well, let's take a quick look ahead to next season. Um, you only lose two seniors off this year's team, so you got a lot of talent coming back. I know it's way in advance, but what are you going to be working for in the spring and, and expectations into next year? Well, we lose two really important parts of our team. Uh, our all-time dig leader in Courtney Cohen, uh, only the sixth player in Sunbelt history to amass over 2,000 digs in a career. Uh, Alex uh, did a great job for us over the last three years of, of helping us get to a point where we are now. So uh, just experience-wise, that's, that's one of the major things. And uh, we always say if we can take care of the ball on our side of the net, we'll, we'll, do a, we'll be competitive. And uh, we like the way we, we shape up for this coming spring season. Uh, we've added some key pieces for next year with some new players coming in. So it's, it'll be a lot of fun to, to throw things together and see how they work together and how the, how the team comes along. All right, well, we look forward to, to seeing you next year and hopefully uh, – have a, another good season, and, and uh, hopefully you'll get to finish out what you, you started in the Sunbelt Championships. Well, we appreciate it, and, and thanks to all the, the Trojan fans out there that came out for the Sunbelt Tournament. Uh, it was a great atmosphere, and we couldn't have done it without you. And go Trojans. All right, thanks, Coach. And uh, thank you all for joining us in 2013, and we look forward to seeing you again in 2014 as this wraps up our fall semester.